Hi, I'm Becky with Icing on Top Becky's Cakes. And today we're gonna make a blown sugar dolphin and put it on top of an ocean spray. It's gonna be a lot of fun. And here are the tools we're gonna to use. This is a silicone noodle and it withstands high heat temperatures that the liquid ice malt comes to. 30 second intervals in the microwave. White ice malt, and then we have a bunch of clear ice malt that we're gonna use. And I'm gonna use this ring, it's a mousse ring. And if you put some vegetable oil or shortening around it, it'll keep this, the ice malt from sticking to it. I also have my sugar pump today, which I'll use when we get to the dolphin part. And the noodles, the ice malt, the sugar pump, all those things I purchased from sydneycakes.com. And she is a wonderful sugar artist and I have used a lot of her stuff. Now I am double gloving here because my hands don't want to be scorched. So I have cotton gloves and then I have some uh, latex gloves and that helps protect them. But you will still get burnt if you pour <laughs> Uh, liquid ice malt on your hands. So be very careful with this stuff. Super, super hot. And that's going to be my only disclaimer there. Now I am pouring the clear ice malt right in between these noodles. See, I am using some props to prop my noodle into place how I want it to be. Also, the thing on the end is also silicone. So I know that the ice malt will not stick to it. Now I am pouring quite a bit of ice malt because I want it to be super thick because it needs to hold a dolphin and it needs to stand there for a long time. So I made a nice thick piece of ice malt there. And as you can see, I am painting it with white ice malt just to give it some texture and give it more of a, an ocean spray look. Now, while it's still warm and not set, so we don't want it hard yet. We want it to be still warm, but not completely liquid that's gonna all pour out as soon as I do this. I am sticking a can, I'm actually using my can of shortening because it's what I had on hand, but put something round underneath it and that'll get the nice curved shape that we're looking for. And uh, when I say underneath it, I mean underneath the silicone mat because that's what we've poured our ice malt on is the silicone mat. Now I'm gonna add some more white ice malt to the end to make it look like it's dripping for the spray. And, um, and really, it, I had a lot of fun with this because I would put some white ice malt here and there and then I would add a little more. And uh, any way to get that look that I was going for, which is the dolphin jumping out of the water and having this spray just coming. So I'm gonna take off the noodles now. It is still warm, but firm enough that it's gonna stay where I need it to stay. Now with those out of the way, I'm gonna be pouring some white ice malt down both sides and then dribbling a little bit on top of it. And that just gives it more of that flowy water look. And if you've ever seen pictures of dolphins jumping out of the ocean, their spray is usually white. So that's why I'm trying to give it a lot of white ice malt here the front of it and I'm gonna lightly heat that and then use my little tool that has uh, silicone on the end to give it the details and stuff that we want. So I'm just gonna lightly give it a little bit with the blowtorch there and then just use that tool to mark it and give it make it look more like a, a spray of water here. Now you may wonder if you can do the same thing with my sugar recipe, and yes you can, but the color will be different. Um, and um, here in my ring I'm going to go ahead and pour out that clear ice malt so that this will be my base. And see how nice and clear this is. With sugar you're going to have a little bit of a yellow color, and also for pouring white ice malt like this, it's not going to be nice and pure white like this either. So that's definitely why I use ice malt. I am just dripping down a silicone mat and I stuck a cup underneath it and that way it just gives me these little curvy drips that I need that I will be adding later. Once this is completely cooled and hardened, I will peel off the silicone mat and we can stick it to our base. That looks really cool because you have the clear, you have the white, gives you a good water look. 
after popping it out of the ring, we're gonna take some more white ice malt and pour it all around the outer edge. Wait till it firms up just a little bit so that it is not all runny. And then I'm gonna stick it on a cup so it can drip down a little, heat that with my torch, and then use my tool to give it more of a spray look. After removing that, we're going to set it down and add just a little bit of clear ice malt right to the middle. It's liquid, so it's going to act as our glue. And we're going to take our curved piece and stick it right on there. Once I get it in position, I am going to hold it in place until it's completely cooled so that it will not fall over. Then I'm going to take these little uh, white pieces that we had made, these little curved white pieces, and I'm going to dip each piece in the liquid ice mold as I stick it to our spray. So it makes it look like a bunch of spray is coming out right at you. Put up right next to me and that just helps it cool right away so that I can move on to the next piece. Okay, next comes the really fun part. I have poured out some clear liquid ice mold onto my silicone mat and made sure I have both my gloves on. <laughs> and now I'm going to move it back and forth and kind of stick it onto each other until it gets nice and tacky. Then you're just gonna pull it back and forth and get that heat all even. That was Lena, she's all done. Anyway, we keep pulling it back and forth till the heat is all even. And now that we roll it in a little ball, I'm going to heat the copper pipe on this. And as you can see, it already has some dried sugar on it that helps it to cling to our sugar ball here. And then we're just going to insert it halfway in and pinch the ends so the air does not escape. And I'm massaging the sugar ball back and forth giving it one pump and that just made sure that the air was not escaping. And I keep moving this ball back and forth, massaging it with my hands so that it becomes more of an oval. So it slowly stretches it out. I have the video sped up for you because normally this process is quite a bit longer and you have to have patience and do it slowly because if you go too fast, you get too much air in one section and then it, the wall in that section becomes too thin. So that's why you just want to do a pump, feel where the air is coming in and then massage it with your hands, especially if you're making a longer shape like this and you don't want all the air concentrated in one area. Stretching that shape long, massaging it back and forth as it gets longer to be more of a dolphin shape as we go. I'm turning on my fan to help with the cooling process. So I want it to cool down as I work and that'll also harden it. So I, we want to work a little faster with the shape on of the face right on the front because if it gets too hard you won't be able to do the, sh the shape of the face the way you want to. I'm just gonna kind of pinch the front a little here to make the nose of the dolphin and press down a little there. Now the dolphin's gonna be a little fatter on the top than on the tummy, so I'm gonna rub it that way too so that, so that it pushes back down and it's more dolphin-like in shape. I'm also slightly pulling it forward and bending it down so that it has a little curve like the dolphin is jumping out of the water. Well, at this point, because it's getting harder as it gets cooler, and it's very easy to shatter at this point. Once it gets to be the shape that you want it to be, just let it cool 
completely till you're certain it's hardened in front of the fan and then just heat the copper pipe with your blowtorch. Now sometimes it takes a couple takes to get it completely heated all the way through to where this will just slide out. Now it's copper so that conducts the heat and that's why the whole thing gets hot when you just heat one end of it. So just slowly slide that out, press down the back end of the dolphin. And now we are gonna make the fins and tail and everything out of isomalt here. So this is another piece of isomalt that I had pulled and stretched and it's still warm and so soft enough that I can cut it. Once I let all those pieces cool and harden, I can just use my blowtorch to heat the ends of it, just the end very lightly, and then I can stick it on the dolphin wherever I need to. Now I place the dolphin in this uh, silicone, um, what is this, my spheres that I used, but it's silicone. Um, at this point, it doesn't need to be on silicone because it's completely hard, but it's a nice soft area for the dolphin that wasn't going to mess with its shape. And I just like to be super careful with these things since they're so fragile. So it worked out really good for me. So I'm just going to continue heating each of these sections and pressing them into the dolphin in place. And then at the end, uh, once I am have my completed dolphin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some liquid ice malt that I've heated in the microwave, a nice little amount of that, and put it right on top of my wave. And then I'll place the dolphin on that because you don't want to use your blowtorch to heat either the dolphin or your wave because either of those would melt. And here's some diamond dust. I'm going to sprinkle all over my dolphin and give him a super nice silvery look. So here he is after I place him on top of the wave and I'm going to put the whole sugar sculpture on top of my cake. And if you want to see how I did this cake, I'm doing a tutorial about how to make this buttercream wavy look on a cake, this ocean themed cake. It's a lot of fun too. Thank you for joining me today and please subscribe to my channel.